Uh, can you switch that, Jeffrey? Hold on. I got it. Hold I got on. it. Oh, we can hear you fine, dog. Okay. All right. I'm loud and clear. Yeah. Perfect. Sorry about that. Don't apologize. I'm good. We got you some setups. Are you ready for something real quick here? Of course. Give him a double hit. We got a, we got a couple bangers here for you, my friend. Oh, okay. Let's go. I'm always ready. Uh, <laughs> this boy right here. All right. It says, hi, Mike. I'm 50 and I'm TRT. Would either SARMs or peptides affect my test level? Been working out since 13. I have developed some injuries along the way. So I'm looking to heal quicker. Thanks. Awesome. All right. So you're 50 and you're on TRT. So you're on testosterone replacement therapy. Awesome. Now, when he asked about SARMs or peptides affecting test levels, so SARMs and peptides, peptides are definitely not going to affect testosterone levels. SARMs could suppress if you go off of them, but if you're on testosterone replacement already, it's not going to suppress your testosterone levels because you're you're getting this exogenously, right? So that's not going to be it. But when we talk about helping with injuries, that's when we really want to go to peptides. We talk about BPC-157, TB-500, which are healing peptides and some of the best healing peptides out there too, right? And they both work together synergistically. And at that point, they're going to be able to help muscles, tendons, ligaments, you know, and be preventative too as well if you are injured. So if, you are, if you're injured with acute or chronic injuries, you're going to want to take these two together if possible. If you only can only take one, I'd probably pick BBC over the TB500. That's just my personal choice. Um, but then we want to talk about maybe something else. We want to talk about fast recovery too with using an IGF-1 or GHRH peptide. And it just so happens that we've released a new therapy and a new therapy of the week, hexarelin. So hexarelin, if you don't know what this is, this is another antagonist to raise growth hormone levels. It's another GHRH peptide. And you're going to say, well, what's the difference between this and CJC with IPA, right? So CJC with iparelin are two different peptides that work together to stimulate your natural growth hormone levels. And with that, anti-aging, you know, recovery, repair, all this stuff happens. But with hexarelin, this is actually, it increases more growth hormone on paper and with patients than CJC with iparelin does. The other benefit to this, and I'm not going to like weigh heavy on this, but they said that there are cardio uh, protective properties by using hexarelin too as well. So there's some good things with hexarelin that replace CJC and IPO, but my main point to this would be to use something to raise your own growth hormone levels or take IGF-1 to help heal faster and maybe heal better, a lot better for sure. Nice that one. Johnny. That one's easy. That was easy. I yeah, I, I like that you you answered that also. Just that I think you and I both agree that we don't like people to do SARMs. No. Or at least I I, I don't think SARMs I don't. are an intelligent thing. And it, so the other negative pretty, thing about SARMs is liver toxicity, because most are oral, and that's the biggest thing. Like that drives up. So you got liver toxicity. It, it suppresses your natural testosterone level. So, you know, people usually would go with SARS, especially these kids, because they didn't want to do testosterone. Like this was the big, latest, greatest thing that they could take and be able to get results. But then when they come off, they're like, oh, damn. And then there's suppression of testosterone. At that point, their system has to reboot. And it might not come back to where it needs to come back to or where it naturally was. And then we were discussing right there. That's how you pronounce or that's how you write it. Um, yep. And no, Excellent. I didn't write that. That was Jeff. I don't think I could spell that. <laughs> All right. It says, Mike, I do have five S1 seven millimeter disc hernia. Also muscle atrophy. Is there any advice? I'm thinking about TRT starting. So yes, that will definitely help. I mean, to a little bit, I guess. Um, you know, BPC and TB500 for the sure, but muscle atrophy, you're definitely going to look at maybe, I mean, maybe this could help, you know, obviously testosterone I think could help, especially if you're, you're low or clinically deficient. Um, and then at that point, like, you know, looking at some different things, maybe taking inflammation away from the body. And um, I mean, muscle atrophy, where in the back area, in the leg areas, like, where is this at? I mean, you can use Hercules and try to really focus on areas, 
you know, you got to have to train around the injury and around the pain too as well. Could you let us know if you uh, are doing something or have done something to um, open up the disc area and, and the, right. uh, I'm assuming the atrophy is down the leg on the one side that it's yeah. uh, more leaning towards or yeah. I, let us know there's more to this. Uh, Cause I would say definitely try to get that back fixed. If there's Absolutely. atrophy, it's at a, it's at a different level right now where you'd want to try to take care of that. You do not want it to go through. I mean, you know, if you're having that much atrophy then there's a problem that you definitely need to get fixed for sure. Um, also, uh, what is the STEM machine? The the new the X. new tech new X yeah we have we use the new X uh, to kind of force mm -hmm. blood into locations and stuff um, mm -hmm. but then you get like stim machine to try to get those nerves firing up the best you can um, yep. just to teach your body again if if you've done something to fix it and try to fire those things back up again because uh, sometimes fixing uh, and um, just takes care of the pain aspect of it but you still got to fire those nerves back up mm -hmm. give some life back to them sorry to hear that my friend yeah that sucks back problems no good for sure so i'm pulling up hey. this one because i know john's got some stuff related to this question oh uh, it's a great one. So, sure, sure. it says hey mike sex is it good for gains well, yeah, obviously, you know, I mean, they say that, you know, an orgasm a day will definitely keep the doctor away in some different levels. Um, you know, at that point, you know, it's fun, makes you happy. Now, can you be better in the bedroom? That's the other thing. And a tight medical center has your back on that, both males and females out there to raise that libido and raise that drive and to increase pleasure and satisfaction in the bedroom, creating the superhero outlook for you and your partner and taking your love to new height levels. Or maybe it's just a one-night stand. You just want to have a good time. Who knows? Ooh. But at that point, you know, it's definitely going to be good for gains, uh, you know, all the way around, I think. You know, mentally, physically, that's going to be a good thing. Cardiovascular, that's going to be a good thing if you can keep up and go longer, longer than 20 seconds. I think you'll be good. But if you can't, Tight Medical Center has something that will, pre, that will help that premature ejaculation too as well. So there's something that will make you sustain longer. And at that point... You can uh, you can do the job a lot better, I think. Plus, we have Trimix. If you guys really want to inject, Ooh. there's people out there that want no, to inject. You yeah. No, you don't. No, you don't. You. Oh, it's he a has big it. seller, guys. See, I know this because this guy will be here. This guy's got like stories. No. Oh my gosh. No. Oh. Yeah, hey, you do the instruction video. I can send out the patients. Oh my <laughs> god! I heard about this. I heard this is the most crazy uh, second level. Think, now, see, Serge just says he's going to Vegas, and, and it's a yep. uh, uh, um, area code is freebie. So, because he, he's going to Vegas, he gets to uh, unleash. So you Does he need popular. blood work, or can he just put an order in right no blood now? Work. Whatever All you have to do is he needs. Provider, fill out the new patient paperwork. You're good to go to get it. Okay. All right. So, all right, Serge, you're set up, man. And go back to this. What? Is, how do you pronounce it? Trimix. Trimix. Yeah, it's trimix because there's three different components. There's three different active ingredients that are in it. There is a quad mix too that has four active ingredients. That's even more potent. So for how long you been out of San Francisco, Jeff? You didn't know so, about this. I'm out of the loop. Yeah, yeah. So you know, this we make people. We if they want that injection, they can get the bottle for the injections, right? But we make them take get the antidote too as well. They have to buy the antidote along with the injections. You right? just say that you're gonna give some kind of sex stuff, but there's an antidote to it. Yeah. There's an antidote. Wouldn't it just be tell your girl to call five friends? No, that's not. Let the me antidote? tell you why. I'll tell you some real world stories and some a good one and get good example for you too as well. All right, so we've always offered trimix and quad mix. The only reason is, is we Price don't advertise it. the first it. time we've ever heard of this. This is the first time. I don't advertise it. Yeah, don't come on now. We don't got to push it. Like, we don't, like, like have to put it out there because, listen, in my mind, I don't think there's a lot of guys out there that will inject their penis to get erections. But. Yeah, he said that. That's like me going into a bar and saying, all I want to drink is Crown Royal because I like Crown Royal. But everybody else likes Heineken, right? So there are people out there that love these injections. There are people out there that need these injections, right? The porn industry, most of those guys are taking these injections, okay? 
And what happens is, is when you take this injection, you inject in your penis subcutaneously. And what happens is, is you get rapid blood flow and then you get an erection. And that erection will last up to four hours, right? Now, a Rookie little numbers. bit goes a long way. Come on. A little Come on. bit goes a long way, right? Now, people always think, well, I'm the egotistical guy. I need a little bit more. I've got a high tolerance. I'm going to take a little bit more. Okay. If you do that, then at that point, you're going to keep an erection. And if you keep an erection past six hours, they say four, but really starts at six, the capillaries in your penis, you can start damaging them. And then your erections will be for the rest of your life. Wow. Right. So let me give you the, the real right. world example of why we make people get antidotes. So this is the reason why. Keep going, keep going. So this is the reason why. The reason we make people get antidotes is because we have a doctor friend and the doctor friend was like, oh, he's like, let me try it for my dad. And he's decided, you know what? I'm going to try it on myself. And he was one of those guys that said, you know what? I'm going to take this a little bit more because I know what I'm doing here with dose of medications. Took it, had the erection, had sex, great. Multiple times with his wife, great. Now, six hours comes. He's calling me. Hey, John not going down yet i'm like well did you do everything ice cold water like you know he's like i've done everything i'm like well dude i'm like you need to get that taken care of you know at that point he told me what he did i'm like you either gotta get the antidote or you're gonna have to go in and they're gonna have to draw the blood out one way or the other it's gonna have to happen because if you keep going it's gonna be a problem so he gets to about eight or nine hours now he's calling me he's like man i'm in a lot of pain he's like i'm gonna go to the emergency room or I'm going to call one of my buddies. So what does he do? He calls one of his urologist buddies, comes over one of those big ass needles and has to drain his penis. Not fun. Not what you want to do on a day or any day. Right? So that's where we make people get the antidote because if they do take a little bit too much or they want the erection to go down after three hours, they've had plenty of fun. They can inject. It goes automatically down. Done deal. Well, that takes care of that. <laughs> okay. So those guys on set, like on those movies and stuff like that, usually they're injecting and they're staying up and they don't need no fluff or anything like that. They're just ready to rock and roll. Come on, John. Or those things got are older weak. guys that have heart problems that can't yeah, what, take. Who can and who can't? Everybody can take that. And it's really there, good for the people that with high blood pressure or low blood pressure. Can you give us any insight? That. No, does it does doesn't affect that not whatsoever. And it's actually it's for patients that can't take other things because you know viagra and all that will mess with those those levels of blood pressure and it can be bad especially they take nitro pills so they have cardiovascular issues this is the way to go they can't get erections because they take uh, these really high doses of these bad blood pressure medications um and stuff like that or you know medications that are giving side effects of erectile dysfunction they can't get a, uh, an erection using some of the other stuff or can't use other stuff they go to try mix and then they love it then control it i know a guy here that you know he runs this one of the the, the, the places that the girls dance at on the poles I don't want to say the name but at that point he runs through them and he's got this and he goes to the back and jacks and then he's ready he's having his fun i got a question for you uh, I, I i see a lot i'm in that stage of uh um, you know, prostate and everything. There is a lot of studies showing about um, ejaculation and a guy should a certain amount each month. I think at some point we should kind of go into this, just uh, telling guys sure. that um, I think they don't realize that you should try to release the uh, Absolutely. the nectar or however Absolutely. you want to call it. <laughs> it definitely de-stresses. They know that. There's most people think it lowers your testosterone, but it's it just it, you, you rebuild and rebuild and rebuild. Yeah, it does not. It, it doesn't lower your testosterone levels to do that. Now, listen, there's been there's plenty of people out there right now bashing porn, all that. Like, you know, like there can be addiction to porn, of course, like anything else to a certain degree. Uh, but I think you use it as a tool as a guy. If you need to, then you can. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I definitely think, you know. Even when I was single, man, I mean, come on. I, I I think that was one of the biggest things on my list, one of the top things on my list at that point in time. 
was, you know, achieve that at least when I was single, at least three to four times a week, I guess. You know, obviously I've been married for 16 years and I do it almost every night. So at that point, like, definitely good. See, that's what we got, Jeff and Serge here. <laughs> They're going to tell us about that lifestyle. You and me are married. I know. We're locked down. Know. We're living vicariously through them, swiping left and swiping right. I have a good one. This is something that I know that not only – I think this is really good because of the fact of I try to tell people I tell power lifters, I tell the, the housewife this learn to flex each muscle. Yep. Now, I fully understand that this may be hard for some people to connect. Yep. But you guys over at Titan Medical have some stuff, the Hercules potion, the AAs sure. that will sure. actually help stimulate and get that uh, a better connection. Yep, that mind and muscle connection we always talk about that is so key to really enhancing your body and knowing how your body works and controlling your body. And that's why flexing is necessary. Uh, it's posing in the mirror and looking and seeing and connecting with that muscle, connecting with your body and really, truly controlling it. You know, that's what it's about. Um, and if you train, your intensity can go up even more when you have that connection with your mind and muscle. So... You know, you can feel it. You can feel the blood pushing in there. You know the contractions there. It's a good feeling. You know you're getting the work in. Um, so, yeah, I think mind and muscle connection is key. And if you haven't experienced mind and muscle connection, don't worry. It's something that you can experience. And with Hercules Potion, it makes it a lot easier to start that connection between the mind and the muscle. And we were talking about attributes before with muscles. So we've had a lot of people who've gotten accents. And one particular just comes up in my head because he's one of the first guys that we ever did it with. He was in a motorcycle accident and he broke his femur on his right leg. And at that point, what happened was, was it went through atrophy. So when the cast and everything came off, obviously his leg looked a lot less than the left leg did. So what was he going to do? He was going to start going through physical rehabilitation and building back up. And this wasn't just some little guy. He was a he was a bodybuilder. So at that point, like his his left leg was was a lot bigger. So mind and muscle connection, attacking with the Hercules potion, and really really developing that muscle again. And and he's back to normal. Thank God. You know, perfect symmetry and the whole nine. So yeah, I think that mind and muscle connection is key. Flexing is key. And at that point. If you need to make that minor muscle connection, Hercules Potion, if you already got it, this just makes it even better. Recommendations for over 50 lifters. Well, obviously, get your blood checked. Make sure your hormones are in check. Make sure everything's dialed in there. And then what can help you, whether it's helping your joints because you've had some stiff joints or some problems over the years in shoulders, elbows, knees. Uh, you know, if you want to raise that growth level to hopefully recover faster, faster than what you are now, that would be an option with a number, number, number for different treatments from IGF-1 to GHRH peptides. Um, really, I mean, I, I think that was it. The EAAs are a tight and strong blend. Um, you can add those to the mix. I think it'll be really, really good for recommendation for 50 or, or over lifters. Is it possible to fully recover after a disc hernia, which is seven millimeters? I really don't know, guys. I mean, I know that it's possible for people to recover from a number of different things. Oh, no, I can't hear him. You can hear me now. So this yes. is um, the guy that asked earlier about uh, his, his back, and I was asking uh, atrophy. his atrophy there. And so now... So we now know that he did do some type of, I'm assuming, surgery. This is what I am picking up from this. And so if we bypass uh, fully, um, I think because the, the point of Titan Medical is to help you as, as best as you can, as right, it's for sure any injury. We hope that you come back fully, but what can we do and what can help? So right now, the Hercules potion would help that for atrophy sure. area. Even, even well, I mean, even full recovery after this year, yeah, I mean, for sure. That BBC, I, I think TB500 would definitely help him too as well. Full full recovery, absolutely. All right, Jeffrey. We had, a, we had a good one up here. Um, it was a really, really good one. It said, how do you get down 
hematocrit and hemoglobin levels. Yeah, right here. Boom. How do I lower my hemoglobin and hematocrit levels? They are too high. So we actually did a video on this. Uh, it was like just a real splat off one. Like this is really important, really important. So if you're on testosterone, if you're on any androgens, anything like that, it could possibly raise hemoglobin, hematocrit, and red blood cell count. Can you tell yeah. us before we go into that, what is he speaking of and what is this? So just sure, everybody sure. understands. So, so this is something that is inside the complete blood cell count lab and your hemoglobin, hematocrit, and your red blood cell count. So these all work synergistically together. So red blood cells, obviously, and then you got your hemoglobin, hematocrit, which are in there, platelets and stuff. So at that point, what happens is, is these things can start getting thicker with your hemoglobin, hematocrit going up. Red blood cell count goes up. So with it getting thicker, it's not pumping through the body like it should. It's like, it can get like sludge-like. That's the best possible thing I can describe it where you can get a vision in your head and it won't get through. So when that happens, then you're at high risk for hemoglobin, hematocrit, red blood cell count, or excuse me, DVT or blood clot and stroke. So with that, you're at really high risk. So with him asking this question, usually hemoglobin, hematocrit do not raise on their own. It's something that's going to drive this to raise. Red blood cell count, on the other hand, could rise by itself. Maybe one of these might rise a little bit. But when you start seeing the correlation of all three or two of these things like this, then at that point, you're going to want to do some sort of donation. Now, usually you can go to like, I don't know, we've got one blood here, Red Cross. You go in there and just tell them, I want to do a donation. I'm feeling generous today. They're going to take 500 milliliters of blood from you. And at that point, it will help lower it down. Now, if your levels are extremely high, you might need to do multiple donations. And with donation centers, you can only do it like once. And I, I think it's like every 30 days or something like that. Maybe might even be more. I haven't donated blood like that in a while. But if you're on treatment from a provider, what they can do for you is a therapeutic phlebotomy. And what that is, is that's a prescription for you to take in to one of these blood places and they will drain that blood by prescription, by the physician's orders. So they can't tell you no per se. And that's the only way you can do it. That's the only way. A lot of people say, well, can I take um, like aspirin to thin my blood? Well, it's not just thinning your blood. They have to actually get this blood out. That's that's what happens. That's right. I hope that uh, let us know if that helps you out, my friend. Yeah. Question from Mr. Tight. Does enclomethine increase muscle mass over time or just helps men with low T feel better? So enclomethine raises testosterone levels. Testosterone should in, 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 in hand, if you're doing the right things, training, eating, sleeping, drinking water, the essentials, then obviously you can increase a lot more muscle mass with the heavy low T. So if you have low T, it's going to be hard to increase muscle mass. But if your testosterone levels are optimal, then it's going to be a lot easier to do that. But either way, you're not just going to gain muscle from enclomethine. You're not just going to gain muscle from taking testosterone. You have to do the work also to get the muscle and everything along with it. So there's no way around that. You can't fake it to make it to build muscle, you know? So, so he's I, asking I, like, so glad that you said that because I, I was writing this down right now and I, I, I want these people to understand that um, in a sense it is a magical you know uh, journey and can be if everything else is done that you are in control of. That's right. Or uh, you know the worst of it will be you, you have healthy testosterone. Uh, but you're 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 losing this golden chip to get you into a different level. And like Johnny says, just because you're doing enclomiphene or HRT or TRT or whatever it is yeah, that whatever. you're doing, unless you do the work, eating better, not perfect. You don't have to be Mr. Olympia. Right. Uh, if you're training, again, you don't need to be a CrossFit guy or an Olympic athlete, but at least. Like the one single father, you know, you're at home doing the bands, you're doing push-ups. Yeah, continue, yeah. John. I just, I just so want wow. these guys to understand that yeah. you don't do this, and then you're Ronnie Coleman. Yeah, I mean, you know, think of, think of, uh, like, you know, having a better testosterone level or some of these different therapies. Like, um, 
I'll, I'll go to something different. Usually I go to cars, but let's go to, let's go to tools, right? So you have a manual saw and you have an electric saw. Manual saw will get the job done, but electrical saw is going to be a lot quicker, right? A lot easier and expedite. So that's what's going to happen with this. If your testosterone level is good with a colon fear testosterone, yeah, you're going to feel good. Your, your body might change a little bit, right? You might get a little stronger, retain some muscle mass. But if you're doing the right things, like electrical saw, now you're taking it to town, you're just going through and zipping through things. like and You're expediting the results. You can do a lot more when you're doing the right things uh, than not, right? I mean, obviously, you know, and it's it's so key. It's it's not just key to building muscle, but it's key for overall health, right? And that's the main thing they should be focused on overall. Yo. Yo. Uh, yeah. Coming in with the echo. All right. Um, I'm gonna pull some of these up for you, John. Hyperlactin oh, and men. And any supplements to recommend? Oh yeah. So hyperlactin and, and men. Prolactin. I I hear that one being thrown around a lot. Sure, prolactin's in the hormone in the body. As far as that goes. Um, prolactin is, um, so females, right? Um, uh, prolactin goes up when females have babies and that's where milk, that's how it's you know, stored and shot out. Basically prolactin levels rise, the ducts in the, the breast start shooting milk. So prolactin now prolactin can mean a, a couple different things for somebody that has high prolactin. Now, if you have high prolactin naturally, this is something you might want to get checked out because prolactemia, which is a tumor can expedite and raise prolactin levels. So but prolactemia is what it's called. So that's one thing. So if you have high pro prolactin levels, naturally, this is something you want to check out for sure. There are things that you can take, like cabergoline and such, that will lower prolactin. But at that point, this is something you definitely want to look at. Um, the other thing, if you're taking Tren or any of these things, this will raise prolactin levels. I actually have seen guys shoot liquid out of the nipples. They were taking high doses of Tren, and their prolactin was through the roof. Okay, I've seen it multiple times, Jeff. At least two guys or three guys I know for sure that I can think of. I was like, "This is this is ridiculous!" Like, I'm like you're a little girl. Like, what, what's going on here? It's it's the most weirdest thing you'd ever see. But that's what it is. So prolactin is something that I would take serious if it is high naturally. You know, just get checked out. You're going to want to get a scan just to make sure and verify there's not a tumor there. Um, but at that point, like, you know, otherwise, it's something that's causing it. And if you're going to ask me something, I don't any know any supplement that's going to lower prolactin. I'm sure there's a couple out there they are advertising that they do, but I haven't seen any on paper that do officially. So I can't point in the right direction. Medication-wise, absolutely. That just shows up on your blood work? Yeah, so you can get a prolactin test, and you can see. So usually when I when I when somebody tells me, "Hey, look, look, and this is for a lot of guys that abuse a lot of a lot of stuff, and they're not getting monitored doing things to us," but what happens is is they'll call and they're like, uh, you know, doing my own thing, nipples <laughs> are hurting real real bad, like real bad. And I'm like, and then you know the first thing you think of is like, all right, well. Possibly some some underlying gynecomastia, like no, it's like flared, like you know, I'm getting a little leakage. Possibly, I mean, there's it, it happens, guys. I'm telling you, leakage. I'm not joking around with you. I'm gonna guarantee, Mike. You ask some of the guys that are competing nowadays. Leakage from like that, that kind of turned me on, on, man. I'm <laughs> not joking, dude. I, I I I dare you guys to go on like YouTube or something like this and look that up after this. I guarantee you guys find some wild videos. I'm not looking at any of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go straight to it. He's going to do the dark web after this. No, I'm going straight to <laughs> Sorry, guys. Who's got leakage? John, do you have to take ATG for life like TRT? So you don't have to take TRT for life if you don't want to. You're just going to go back to your levels of what it is. Now, HCG is for gonadal support if you're on testosterone replacement therapy. And what does it do? And people ask us all the time, like, why do I have to take HCG? I'm 50 years old. I got four kids. I really don't care about getting my wife pregnant or having any fertility issues. So, you know, what good is this going to do me? And this is where you have to educate. Like, all right, cool. You don't care about getting your wife, girlfriend, whoever pregnant. That's fine. But at that point, we want to do a couple of things. 
One, we want to minimize or have no negative side effects. So when you take testosterone, whether it's cream, injectable, uh, you know, inserts, uh, uh, whatever it is, you're going to shut off your natural production automatically. And what happens when that natural production gets shut off? Then your, your testicles, they go through atrophy and they start shrinking. Your semen production starts lowering. It starts getting bad, which they don't really care about. But your natural production gets shut off completely. So at that point, you got tightness in the area. You know, you're not shooting anything, but a little bit, and that's it, which I think females don't like either. When they see it, they're like, oh, I worked hard for this. Why didn't I get any more? John, my wife rare. does. Yeah, you're at um, a rare form today. <laughs> the six hour hard on guy's nipples are putting the girl wants a big load. I'm sorry. Gee, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my God. So, Ooh, Jeffrey, take, but what it's going to do is it's going to keep your natural production on. It's going to make sure your, your gonads are good. Your testicles are not shrinking. Your serum production is good. Your, you know, the way it looks aesthetically is going to look good too, as well. Um, and you're going to get all the benefits, right? It's going to give you actual a little bit of more of a kick than a suppression. So if you don't want to take it, that's on you. If you come to tight medical center, you would be getting some gonadal support. It could be HCG, it could be in And with us, we have different protocols. So you might be able to take it once every other day, right? If it's HCG. And clomiphene might take two a week at minimal. You might take more. You might take HCG every day. So it's totally, you know, what works for you and your personalized regimen and what the provider really recommends for you to get to your goal and get you feeling good, performing good and looking your best like we want you to. All right. Can you recommend a good starting dose of BPC-157 and TB-500 blend? 33 to 20. All right. So we know one thing right off the bat from frozen grapes and no hate on this, but he got this from some research and chemical site. Because there's no pharmacy out there that creates a BPC-157 and TB-500 blend. If they did, I would be getting it for me and all of our patients. Because that would be the best thing ever, right? Have two in one, have to just pull one syringe and be good to go instead of having to switch bottles. But if you're going to look at this. Now, before asking this question with the starting dose... I mean, I guess I could just give you the starting dose. The starting dose should be the, either 250 micrograms all the way up to 500 micrograms. Now, the other thing you have to look at on this bottle is, all right, how many milligrams of each are in, in this bottle? And then how many do I have to dilute to get this microgram that I need? So you can do the math on it. There's, there's calculators out there. But 250 to 500 micrograms, that's going to do you very well. Um, if it's for a healing thing, preventative, you can go with 250 and, and be fine. But... You Just want to step it up and expedite things, 500 private way to go. Can you take more? You could. Do we know what you're getting? Can you Not Just really. Just really. um, Can you explain what it is? I think there's a lot of times we're, we're so used to talking about this, but we don't explain to the, the viewers what you're – this is the what I love. This is this is connective tissue health. Yes. Yes. Um, so BBC 157 and TB 500 as far as what they, what they do? Yeah. Is that what you're asking, Mike? Yeah, sure. So these things are very, very cool. As far as healing peptides, what these things do, right, is they take down inflammation in the body, right? And the way that they start the healing process, because people are like, how does it heal? How does it help us heal faster? Why is this called the Wolverine Protocol? And it's not Wolverine Protocol, but it will help heal you faster. Now, with this, it creates new blood vessels going to the area that needs to be healed. The problem is, is blood does not get to flow to those areas because of inflammation a lot of the time. So at that point, you want to get the inflammation down. That's what it does. It creates new blood vessels to create new blood flow to go to those areas for healing. That's the best way I can explain it, the easiest way. No, I, that that helps the viewers, I think. I think a lot of people are just listening to you talking about these sure. numbers, and I'd come in blank. I wouldn't I know, even I'm know. I'm sorry, guys. How. I apologize. Yeah, this is – no, no, it's not you, kid. It's it's me. I'm I'm – I'm bringing you guys out here. Uh, John's the guy to talk to again for all of you that are here right now. Um, great crowd, by the way. Uh, HRT, TRT, um, blood work, uh, injuries, the joints are hurting, anything like that. Oh, here we go. All right. I've had thyroid cancer and it made my hair a little thin at the crown. Would GHKCU peptide help fix my hair? 
It can definitely help with hair regrowth. Absolutely. Uh, with thyroid cancer, absolutely. Thyroid can affect the hair, can affect your weight, can affect so many different things. So hopefully you've got that all dialed in with your thyroid medication and you're all good set there. GHKCU peptide would be a good one. You could also mix it with our hair health capsules and our injectable biotin, and that would give you the best probable rate to get your hair thicker and better than what it is now. That's That was like the COVID hair cure is what we did for people. Even Sharice, she lost like 50% of her hair. What do we do? We put our injectable biotin. We put her on a little bit of the GHKCU, but we put her on the hair health capsules too as well. And at that point, she got she got some really good results. Her hair's back. Thank God, because that was her big thing. And all her hair is natural. There's no weaves or extensions or anything like that. Can I ask you a personal question? What are your what is John's top three peptides for you? Wow. I mean, the, the then you don't have to answer said, if that's something. No, no, I'm, no. I'm just like, man. There's there's so many that I take that I'm just like, man. It's hard to pick the top three. If there's three that I have to say, man, like I need these things still. One's for my shoulders, right? So I need BBC one five seven two five hundred. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put those as 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 one. All right, because that's what it is. The other one I would have to take would be peptide wise. Tessa Morellin, I would definitely take that because that's going to raise growth hormone levels, keep me lean. And then my last peptide I would take, God, it's so hard because if it was a cut. I take AOD on top of that. If Good thing not, is you I'm don't have to choose top three, but you know, if you have to, you kind of know, right? System, like, God, this is a tough one. Because I'm tied with you. I, I Number one out of the gate for me is – yeah. TB uh, and, yeah. and BPC is is number yeah. one, and so that yeah. you guys don't understand. That's joints, joint health. That's yeah. number one for 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 me and for John. That's it's yeah. funny to hear. Uh, yeah. And then uh, the next one I would go with uh, the GHK or or uh, the Tessamorellin because yeah. of recovery, skin yeah. health. Um, yeah. is another thing for me that's important. Absolutely. It's funny because it's like it's an HRT company, but the most important things for is, is the healthy joints sure. and, and skin text. In sure. so, you know, that's yeah, yeah that, that definitely be that would definitely be my top. And then, like, like I said, it would just really depend. Like, there's sometimes where I'm taking thymosin alpha one and I'm taking that in the morning for my immune system health, and then like I'll be switching up. Like, you know, there would be times where like I'll be taking IGF one, so I'll start mixing that in the, in the group, right? And start taking that. So it's just different things that, you know, there's different areas where I'm just like, all right, cool. I'm in this phase. I'm going to go through this phase. And then like, if I'm like, all right, well, everybody's getting sick at the office. I better start boosting my immune system as much. I love as possible. that you said that though. I love that you said phase. I love that, that, yeah. that John has a, a protocol. John's not a bodybuilder, but he still has his phases. He Absolutely. understands how the body works. I For just, sure. I hope you guys listen to that. I know that's a side note, but he still goes through a protocol of training where it's okay this 12 weeks i'm doing this okay next 12 yeah. weeks i'm going to maintain these next 12 weeks i'm going to worry about so it, it's kind of a cool thing yeah no it's super cool super super cool um so this guy mike said i often wonder if you can intravenously inject pep peptides curious to see if you guys have any info on this so yes you can um i don't know any pharmacies that make intravenous peptides as far as that goes um have i seen it done yes i have will we do it here at titan absolutely not so you know i wouldn't really mess around with anything that's not supposed to go iv just to make sure preservative wise or all that um but i've seen it done i've seen people inject intravenously growth hormone like ivs a whole nine so i mean you could do anything to that extent but i would just make sure you're being safe about things Could you please name any trusted source for BPC one five seven TB five hundred? Type Medical Center. We have BPC one five seven and TB five hundred that comes from a real U.S. licensed pharmacy, and does not say not for human consumption on the bottle. It's for human consumption. It comes from a pharmacy in your name, and you have full support from Type Medical Center on how to utilize it and use it. At that point, if you get it from anywhere else, I can't guarantee what you're getting. So if you get it from somewhere else, 
it says not for human consumption everywhere else everywhere else jeff it's actually illegal for them to inter infer for people to take these things it's illegal like ask rick collins he'll tell you it's illegal to do this have they cracked down on these people absolutely not absolutely not and on every single vial that you get from uh amino asylum all those other places are out there it all says not for human consumption they legally have to put on the bottle it's for research and chemical purposes only and the people out there buying it they're the rats because they're the ones getting on the experimental side so at that point that's what's going on mm -mm -mm. it's crazazy it's they're, they're cracked down on compounding pharmacies for making some of these peptides like they're giving CJC an IPA problem again after it came back off the ban list now they're like oh we still don't like this so all right well you don't like this well you should go after all these companies because there's a million and one research chemical sites out there and they've gotten more and more prevalent as i went on in business i remember when i first started there was maybe like one or two out there and now i i mean i, I couldn't even tell you how many are out there and it's such an easy business for people that i understand they get the product from china or india oh shit, i can't hear it. Sorry. So, it's okay, kid. So um, from what I understand, we're, we're reading on the internet right now is this is, uh, I'll, I'll let Jeff do this better than I. Hold on. Yeah, looking up this, uh, it's just a disease that, you know, has blisters, blisters sores, inflammation. Gotcha. Um, is nutrition help it at all? I'm looking for I think like nutrition that. would help to a certain extent, obviously. Avoiding things like heat, sweating, sun, stress. Oh, man. <sighs> Stay out of Florida. Stress could do a lot for anybody, even people that don't have a disorder like this. I know stress. Absolutely. Uh, stress, they can break out in hives, too. Yeah. I mean, all kinds of things happen. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you've ever seen this. Or well, I've in. never seen anybody with this particular disease. But if it's a skin disease... And at that point, if inflammation is a big thing, then they're going to want it to lower inflammation as much as possible in the body. Glutathione? Glutathione, for sure. That's the one I was going to go with right away. Glutathione will probably be the number one thing for their body to help them because it helps with skin, right? And it's going to help with inflammation in the body too as well. So, I mean, I think that's a big proponent of what somebody like this should use. Um, and then obviously nutrition too, right? Like eat foods that are, you know, not going to cause inflammation in the body too as well. I think being more like, you know, more conscious of that, I think it'll be a lot better for them. Is there any rec anything you recommend for grain hair? So I don't know of anything. I know they were working on a peptide that was supposed to reverse the color of your hair. But I haven't seen anything about it lately. I, I know there were there was some, some clinical data on it and stuff like that, but they were doing it in mice, but I haven't seen anything for humans yet. I mean, obviously with this one, to be honest with you, raising growth hormone levels, your IGF-1 levels would probably slow down the amount of gray hairs that you do get. That's again, a genetic thing. My dad had black hair until yeah. he passed. My mom was gray by mid thirties. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was wild. It too, but she was a blonde that went great. So it looked great on her. She had porcelain skin. So she looked like a right. <laughs> Zsa Zsa Gabor. <laughs> So it was great. <laughs> nice. There was a question way earlier. It's so high up. I can't find it. But he sure. basically asked, um, what kind of things should he look out for if he thinks he should be starting TRT? Like, what, what are the factors that indicate sure. you could be a candidate? Sure, sure. So low energy, mental fog, or not clear thinking, ED, um, unmotivated. Or depressed and has nothing to be depressed about. Like understand, like your wife died, your dog died, now you're depressed. Now, that's understandable. But if nothing's going on where you, you, you should be feeling down, then there's a problem there, right? Harris didn't win. <laughs> what? Yeah. I, I mean that's that's definitely one for sure. Um I'm trying to think what else. Basically, that's I mean, that's that your body is starting to change. And you're doing everything the exact same. You're still eating the exact same calorie count. You're, you're exercising, doing your exercise, and your body's starting to change. Fat deposits and stuff like that. Then there could be a problem there too as well. Um, you know, aging. 
I mean, if you think you're prematurely aging, that's another one. So all these things can be factors, and there could be a little bit more factors, but those are the main red flags to look out for. Like, well, my energy sucks. You know, um, I'm feeling down. I got erectile dysfunction. I don't feel confident about myself. These are some of the big red flags that people need to say, all right, well, there must be a problem because I didn't feel like this before, and I have no reason to feel like this. And that's what it is. Um, what do we got? What is the best thing to do after an extreme workout and all, all our muscles are very sore? That's what it says, basically. Uh, recover. Eat. Relax. <laughs> I mean, do some d different things. Cryo, uh, jacuzzi, sauna. I mean, there's so many different things you can do for recovery after extreme workouts to help. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Plus, if you have Titan Therapies, that's another good one for sure. BBC, TB500. Uh, or having different blends that have glutamine in them too as well for recovery. That's another big one. I was going to say, uh, you do the same thing after a good workout as you do after a bad workout or after True. any kind of workout. True. And, yeah. Yes, Just so if anybody's here and they read this and, and they're like excited about this. Oh, yeah. After a good workout, what should I do? It's the same thing, guys. There's, you go to work out. Let's say it's a moderate workout. You still eat your nutrition that you're supposed to eat. You still do if you you know if you got your protocol for recovery, um, yep. you know. And then you still at night, a benefit is having some kind of GH enhancer uh, from Titan Medical, a nice peptide or something. Um, yeah. And again, uh, one of the things that's going to help you know that you're doing the best you can is blood work making sure those those markers are all up to par on where Titan Medical would want those numbers to be, too. That's right. I saw something about a 20-year-old. Um, I will answer this one okay. at sure. another time, but what about this one here? Am I okay with that? Any advice for a 20-year-old lifter overthinking their training? A lot of time I felt overwhelmed with the amount of info out there. I would say keep it simple, right? Keep it simple what you're doing. I mean, you know, do the right things, eat, train, sleep, drink water. But at that point, like, don't overthink things. Get yourself a program, some designer program. If you don't know how to design a program at that point, Mike can help you out with that. At that point, start getting into it. Don't overthink it. Start working hard, increase intensity in there, and just do your thing. I think that's the biggest thing that, that holds people back to a certain extent is they start listening to everybody around them and they don't stick to the plan. They have some sort of plan. And then at that point, a guy should say, well, you should do it like this. You should do it like that. Or you should do these, or, or this is going to help. And at that point, like you get pulled in all these different directions and it just, I don't know, like you don't get anywhere. You're just stagnant at that point or you regress in some terms. Get your book out. Uh, write down your program that you're going to do for the next 12 weeks. Yep. And within two to three to four weeks in that range, you're going to be getting stronger. You're going to start looking different to you. Maybe not too much, but just a little. Visually, maybe the clothes fit differently. Maybe you get a little more hungry. Um, but everything is you know, written down out of your mind so you're not so bombarded. It's here. You know what you're doing. And then patience. Just you got to. You're twenty. You're twenty, kid. Just start writing this stuff down, and do not let. And I don't know how to relate because I, I fully understand. Um, this is a different world. I didn't grow up with social media except for the magazines that I was in and stuff. But there's there's tenfold. So I feel I feel bad for you guys. Yeah. Because. When I grew up, I had to self-entertain. Now you guys got to what? What's the term they were talking about? Self-entertain. No, we had to self-entertain because there wasn't much to do. We had to go out and play football or go do something or make up a game. Hey, I'm going to hit you and jump we're off like, the roof and then make a basket and then. We're like overstimmed. Overstimmed. So for you guys, you kids, you're overstimulated, and so there's too much information, and so you have to. I don't know how you do this. But I know one aspect is getting the thoughts out of your mind, putting down in the program, and then trying the best you can to stay with that. And again, for you youngsters, explain it to me how you guys do that, because I'd love to learn how you uh, compartmentalize 
and 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 all this noise coming at you how you deal with that so right. that's my best advice man i just talked to my my cousin and on on that side my they're on my greek side it's, it's crazy my my other cousins it's, it's nuts um she has her son he's 14 years old so she she hit me up right before i got on here and she's like hey she's like you know jensen that's his name he's 14 years old freshman this year uh he's six foot one and a half and he's 180 pounds and she's like what should i do to help him grow because he needs to grow the coach told me to be on varsity next year starting linebacker i'm like man i was like 180 pounds six one and a half and 14 years old is pretty good i was like you know, great great right and she's like great. He's so like i'm loving it so i told her i said um i said can't yeah, coach size no no she and she just wants she wants to keep it natural so he wanted to take some protein powders and stuff like that so she asked me is it okay she don't want it you know anything to disrupt that so yeah and i'm like listen you know he wants to get this fast i understand that there's only so much he's gonna grow give him as much protein as he possibly can take in at that point and just let him do his thing because he's, he's doing very well so yeah, but that's just another thing. But these these kids, they want instant gratification. I think this world that's what it teaches them right now. But something like this, it's going to take a little bit of time to do. Text so her back. A food replacement, not protein. Right. A food replacement. You guys, you parents out there, you, you youngsters, I get that you want to do the protein drink. Do the food replacement drink. You're at an age, you're at a healthy age where your body is working. It is yeah. so working for you. Mostly. 14, 15, 16, talk to your parents about that, but eat. You guys are growing like weeds and just feed the body. You, you, my son is five. He's eating 2,100 calories. Wow. He's five years old. He's eating 2,100 calories. It's like you guys are 14. Most of this kid is 6'1". Wow. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The family's got to be so happy. That's that. That's how the family, but his dad, his his uncle, like you know, D one scholarships, Purdue, like one of the uncle, like these are my cousins, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a scholarship in football to Purdue and a track and field, and he picked track and field over because he was a, a shot disc thrower, right? you know. So it was just it was crazy, but you know, those guys are just massive athletes, big family all the way around. It's it's kind of crazy. That's great though. That's that's family yeah. genetics, cool. man. I freaking love it. I yeah. love it. I, thanks for telling that story. And for that youngster, man, write it down. You know, I, I fully understand it's a different world. What do we got here? What's good with peptides? Yeah, 61. What good peptide? All right. So there's a couple good peptides depending on what is your goal, right? Because there's a lot of different peptides that do a lot of different things. We can increase mental clarity. We can help, you know, as far as you know, healing process. So if you have some owies or some, some banged up uh, areas on your body, if you want to raise growth hormone levels, especially at 61 years old, we know these are usually declined or maybe deficient at your age. And this is something that will keep you younger, better all the way around. Um, or if you want weight loss, and we've got weight loss peptides too as well. Um, so there's so many different things in the peptide world that it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Because there's not one peptide that does every single thing. I wish. That would be awesome. But there's not. So we have to at least start filtering it down to exactly what you're trying to achieve. John, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to let you jump in there and ask Johnny. Yeah. We got our our uh, big red is back. All right. Oh, before yeah. their trip to Vegas, they would like to do some injections in the last 6 to 12 hours. So, try mix. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> AOD. Um I got some haven't done it yet. Yeah. Curious not just for myself but maybe for somebody watching. Sure. Uh, one, what is it and what can I expect if my nutrition's on point and I am doing a good amount of, you know, uh, cardiovascular training as well? Sure. What, what should I be looking for and, and how long will it take to maybe see some results? Sure, sure, sure. All right. So AOD is really cool. So, um, you know, it's an anti-obesity drug. That's what AOD stands for. So if anybody out there ever asks for that, that's what it is. But what is it? So it's 176 amino acid sequence of 191 in growth hormone, right? So the sequence that's in growth hormone just for weight loss effect, that is what AOD is. Um, some people call it fragment or whatever it is, but it's 176 amino acid sequence. What does it do? How is it going to work in helping you lose weight and tighten up? Because that's the biggest thing, right? So the way that it works is it will actually take stored fat and start burning it and using it as fuel and energy for you, right? 
The other aspect is, is what you're intaking and eating is starting to use as fuel and energy instead of storing as fat too as well. So two really big effects to really boost the metabolism to get it to start working for you and start utilizing the calories that are stored and that are not stored per se too as well. When can you start seeing results? You can start seeing results within 30 days, I would say. Ooh, 30 yeah. to 60, 90 days, I would say at the most. But at that point, like if you're eating correctly and you're training, you're going to probably see results within 30 days, right? How much results can you see? 5, 10, 15 pounds over that time period, I would say, if you're right. really, really getting into it. Um, you know, if you're not really getting into it, let's say you're training two, three days a week, you know, you're going to get a couple pounds here or there. It's not going to be optimal. But if you're training four to five days a week, I think, where you're training maybe three days, you know, weightlifting training, two days of cardio, if you want to split it up like that or do cardio on the same days, I don't know. Some of these, people got all different times to split, so it's totally on you what you want to do there. I'm sure Mike will put you through a great routine. Um, do, you, do you recommend a duration to, to stop at? Of like four, eight, 12 weeks? Yeah, after. Yeah, I would, I would definitely say at least 12 weeks. I mean, if you're going to do it right. You know, I mean, you know, four weeks in a month, three months, that's almost like 90 days. Right. And that's kind of what I would say. Can you stand it longer? Absolutely. Um, you know, and if people want to achieve higher weight loss, then there's other things that will achieve higher weight loss. You know, so this is something that I would say where people are like 10 or 15 pounds above their their weight goal, what they want to be. Once they start hitting 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds. Then we need to move to like a heavy hitter, like a GLP one that we know is going to really start knocking off weight real quick um, and then start curbing appetite. Because, you know, usually somebody's like 10 pounds over, you know, that doesn't mean that they don't have self control or eating. They just need to dial it in a little bit. But then you have some people that have no control over their eating and they'll just eat everything that's in front of them, right? What's up, Mike? Oh, you want to eat everything? Me. I want to eat everything. Me. That's me. <laughs> I'm like, ah. last couple of weeks, you know, since I think this is told me last week, was Tuesday, like, hey, you need to start eating more, man. So I just started eating. I just started eating a whole bunch of stuff. And I, this week, I'm like, I better start down. I see Johnny at 260. Yeah. I'm like, ah. the Olympia next year coming in. Yeah. Hey, John, I got a question for you. Uh, this is about, um, I won't say who it is. Uh, I got a, uh, a friend, six six one. Uh, 350. Um, big boy. Big boy. Uh, he's always lifted heavy, 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 heavy. But he's he's, uh, he's overweight. But there's some good size to him. Uh, he has he's he's 55, so he's got some heart issues. I think as well being 350 pounds. Of course. Um, uh, question on is there something. So the AOD would be wouldn't do enough for him because he's three fifty. He's been a GLP one, and he's also kind of the guy that, man, I get him moving in a direction, and unless it's moving a little faster, he just he just loses. He loses he so so right. can he he's do GLP that with a heart issue or 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 something? That's the best thing about GLP ones. They are great for people that have heart issues. That is the number one kicker. There are clinical studies now done that says it improves the heart condition and protects the heart 20% more by taking the drug. There we go. All right. That's, so that you is. got clinical studies on that, clinical studies on kidney protection, and anti-addiction properties. Like it's just more and more research that's being done. Now, let's all attribute this to one thing, and let's talk about that because that's the main thing. Weight loss because that is what happens. When you start losing this bad weight, things start turning around for you health-wise because you ain't got all the stress on your body. There we go. So at that point, it's key to do. So the GLP ones for him would be great. He's gonna see results real quick, which is gonna great. keep him motivated and get him down the weight. And I guarantee everything starts turning. Yeah, this kid would be a stud at 240, 250. Right. He's all he's all you know, he comes in, he trains with and and, and he dude tussles with me. On shoulder yeah. presses and incline, he can. So you know, it, it's. I'd like to see him do it, but it, you know, I've been trying to get him to die for twenty years, and it's just not yeah. there. So well, this, this would be a great thing. I love it. it. Yeah, especially he's getting his age and stuff now. It's like I, I worry about you know, worry about that stuff with these guys. 
So with GLP-1 helping the large heart, it's not going to shrink your heart, right? So it's not going to help in the large heart. It's not going to do anything as far as that goes. As far as cardiac disease, right, that is where this drug helps with. But in large hearts, it's not going to help in large heart. Again, Mary, I cardio think protection, you love dogs so much. That's why your heart is bigger. Because yeah. you love dogs, Mary. That's why. There you go. So same thing here. We love dogs. Johnny, <laughs> thanks for hanging out today, brother. I appreciate you guys, man. Thank you, guys. It's been awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll check with you later, my man. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. We're Thank you guys round so much. Two. Bye, buddy. Later.